All right. I want you guys to get prepared for an amazing speaker this morning. Um, Stephen Dudley is going to be bringing forth a message this morning. He's going to be giving his testimony. Um, just, it's going to be riveting. You're going to be on the edge of your seats. It's, it's amazing. And so let's just welcome Steve with a big round of applause and be encouraged as he actually walks up here to give his testimony this morning. Amen. Isn't God awesome? He's just got to get organized. All right, good morning. All right, so this is going to be a little intense, I think, just because of everything that's been going on and how the enemy doesn't want us to ever succeed or, you know, share what God does in our life. But just, just kind of Pastor Mark has always done, I'd like to start off with a little joke. Um, what do they call pastors in Germany? German shepherds. <laughs> yeah. That was better feedback than what I thought was going to happen, so thank you. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll first start out saying just to make sure that we're all kind of on the same page here. Four years ago, um, we, my family and I got into a car accident. They, my whole family was okay. I, however, um, was not. And uh, for the last four years, I've had to use a wheelchair just to uh, get around. But as you can see, that's not really the case now. So. We will figure out how that all happened. Just wanted to make sure that we're kind of all going to start off in the same place. But this is this is a true story, and I know for a lot of times that we've shared, the reception of it tends to be that it's not true that sometimes it's faked or, or that it's just not possible that God hasn't, that God doesn't do miracles now. It was just for in the biblical times. But this past week, it has been so difficult since last Sunday. I've been trying to write about different topics that I thought would be good to share for Sunday, other than sharing about this recent testimony. And I was kind of acting like Jonah, just kind of running away from a responsibility that I had to share. But a couple days ago, just before, like, on Friday afternoon, I got spat out of the belly of the fish and came to the realization that I needed to share this. So I'm going to be obedient, and hopefully this testimony makes sense, and that we will all be open to receive it, and that God will 
do his work through me because I don't want any um, recognition from this. So we are called to testify of the goodness of Jesus. And I'm here today to testify what Jesus has done in my life and the struggle that we have endured <laughs> just barely over the past four years. However, I wish that I could have this uplifting testimony of like this amazingly like strong faith-filled journey that just has all this strength that God has given me. But that would not be the truth. And in fact, it's almost the exact opposite. So in the early fall of 2020, I had recently completed um, some of my military training. And uh, in September, we had come back from an exercise from just doing some shooting and just making sure that we're all good soldiers. But then when I came back, my family and I wanted a little break. And so we took a trip to Regina. Had a, had a lovely day there. But on our way home, we were stopped at a stop sign and waiting to turn when my son had asked me a question. So I turned to him as we were waiting. And at that split second, before I could turn around, we got rear-ended. And uh, it was a little bit rough, but my wife got us home. But as we got home, my left side of my face was swollen. My hearing on my left side was distorted. My left eye was blurry. And, uh, and I couldn't turn my head. And, and my balance was also off. But I went to the hospital just to go get checked out and to see what was going on. But they were concerned that there was an issue with my neck. So they did some x-rays. And after a few hours there, the hospital told me that I was OK and that I should just follow up with my family doctor. But in the days that followed, I started to get severe back pain that would sometimes lead me or leave me to be in bed for like the whole day. And if that wasn't rough enough, one of the hardest parts of this journey was watching my wife take on more responsibilities, such as doing the, the lawn care, doing all the driving, and also seeing her carry in the kids, and also with multiple bags of groceries. She would go out and shovel the snow, but in doing all of that, she still took care of our kids and also helped me out. But the role of being a man was taken away from me. And I didn't feel like I was wanted by my family, but I felt like I was a burden to them. The four years following the accident were, uh, were extremely hard, you know? And, the, and in the early stages, I was trusting what the doctors had said that just take some time, rest, and that my body would heal itself. See, I knew that God could heal me if he wanted to, but I wasn't overly trusting him. 
And through this, God has stuck with me. And I haven't stuck with God. I've treated God like a vending machine, coming to him when I'm desperate and only needing. But even though I was feeling this way, the Bible tells us that God will never leave us. <laughs> like in Hebrews 13, 5. It stuck with me because even though it says, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have, because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. As time went on, I started to really, really doubt who God said he was. And I started to question, where was God in the Bible, or where was God of the Bible that performed miracles and that he would drastically change people's lives? I grew cold and hard towards God because I'd felt abandoned. Like God had just forgotten me and just left me with this pain. Prayers were going unanswered that I was physically seeing because I was caught in an endless cycle of I'm not good enough for God and that's why God isn't healing me. But if God isn't he healing me and hearing my prayers, then he doesn't care about me. And then therefore, I'm not good enough for God. And that cycle just continued. And it was this mental spiral that the enemy had. And it was overwhelming at times. But the good news is, I can only testify that through the prayers of my wife and my family, and church family, and that the intercession for me is why I was able to uh, hold on to God, even if it was just the smallest little part. And to say that for four years, I had this pain, to say that it would be difficult and exhausting is an understatement. Because as we take the most basic tasks for, uh, for granted, I would spend days in bed to the amount of pain um, that was going through my body. I was in and out of the hospital ER rooms and had countless doctor's appointments and countless amounts of medications just to try and help find pain management. But uh, all those failed drastically. Nothing had helped. Some of the things from the accident that, uh, that were sustained was that I had a torn retina in my left eye. I had a vestibular concussion, which caused my balance to be off. I had hearing loss and uh, a post-concussion syndrome, a loss of feeling and, and mobility in my leg. And my spine felt like it was going to collapse on itself, even though that I was sitting. I had severe migraines and vertigo. But even if I was a passenger in a car, driving over the smallest bumps, I would just moan in pain because every little movement was painful and just trying to exist was exhausting. Now, if that's not... Uh, 
that's almost not the worst part about this testimony, which is a little drastic. But during those years of heartache, struggling both physically but also mentally, I ended up almost wrecking my marriage by turning away from my wife and kids. I didn't make them a priority in my life, and I almost was taking them for granted. I turned my back on God, and from that I almost lost it all. Because in this, I turned to pornography and seeking out attention from other women. I was lying to my wife and trying to convince her that I was doing okay, that nothing was wrong. The truth is that I was being a cheater and, com and committing adultery in my marriage. And God is very clear about this in Matthew 5, 27 to 28. It says, you have heard it that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. But we can also look at Colossians 3.5. Because it says, put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, such as sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. And this was an act that I never took as serious as I should have. Just kind of brushed it off. But it would have been completely okay for Brittany to uh, want to divorce me because of my actions. Because I was being unfaithful in our marriage. And due to those unfaithful actions and those really bad choices that I was making, my wife told me, as a good wife does when she gives her husband a choice, that I needed to either choose her and the kids or I needed to leave. But I know that if it was just up to me and my wife, we wouldn't have made it. But God was the one who kept us together through this. But only because God gave Brittany the heart to show me mercy. And it was through her actions of giving me mercy and wanting to still be married to me, that it has shown me God's heart and the love that he has for us. God gave Brittany compassion, love, and forgiveness. That's unfathomable. It's completely blows my mind. But in Matthew 19, 6, it talks about marriage. And it says, So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. And I'm so thankful for that verse. So thankful for God's intervention in this. But another aspect that I was going through was that mentally I was struggling. I turned to self-harm and started to have thoughts and desires of ending my life. And it would just add to it when my boys would come ask if I would like to wrestle with them. It just added to the pain that how could I be a father if I wasn't even being active in their lives? And that in itself 
added to the lie that my family would be better off without me. And so, after being uh, told that I had to use the use of a wheelchair, it took me a little bit to uh, accept that. But things didn't turn out quite so well as I lost my job. And uh, my civilian job, sorry. But God, God really gave me grace for uh, the military. As they were still willing to work with me and just having me do some virtual work but I could still be part of that. As I was trying to find another place of work, I applied to countless companies, but I always would receive a no, or that the building itself wasn't wheelchair accessible, and so how could they have an employee that needed um, accessible equipment? And this, too, affected my thoughts of being absolutely worthless. But in the end, I decided to go back to university through distance learning so I didn't have to deal with any non-accessible buildings or classes. And in doing so, it has also helped bring in some money, so that helped. But on the 30th of May of 2024, I was trying to prepare for my university exams. And I was having a very difficult time trying to focus as there was this deep tugging in my heart. Like it was like in my soul. And it was the conviction that God was giving me. It was so strong that I couldn't think about anything else. <laughs> and when I tried to ignore it, my heart would race even faster. And I would try and push it down, and it would just get worse. And the urge to, uh, to deal with this increased. But what I needed to do is I needed to ask Brittany for forgiveness and ask God to forgive me. That's to ask him to make me new. And in this process, I was so convicted that I surrendered to God. I gave up my actions my choices, and I told God that if I was going to have to stay in the wheelchair to move around and to have that kind of life, that I was going to be okay and I wasn't going to be upset with him. I came to a place of humility that God was going to be the head of my life. And in 1 John 1, 9, it says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And on May 31st, 2024, I had to write three university exams on the same day. Now, this was due to my own failure of some time management. But I was really desperately needing God's help with this. Because my exam started at 9 a.m. and I didn't get done till about 11.45 p.m. And I thought it was gonna be the absolute worst day. And uh, it ended up not being 
as bad as I thought. Because God gave me the endurance to complete that challenge. And at the end of the day, even though that I was exhausted mentally, I wasn't frustrated with the with the effort that I'd put in. Because God had given me the strength. I didn't do it on my own. Now, on June 2nd, 2024, I was really struggling with wanting to come to church because there was a previous night that of just severe back pain. We were tired and and we weren't too sure if we could come. But we ended up getting ready in time and with having four boys, it's hard to get ready in time. <laughs> but we ended up getting ready and Dr. Kazumba was here So we listened to his service, and after, he did an altar call for prayer. We went up and received prayer. And after going back to where we were sitting, I was sitting there, and I was a little bit confused because I was like, something feels a little bit different. So I, I told my mom that my leg felt a little weird. And her reply was, okay, and she walked away. I thought it was going to be a whole lot different, but in her defense, she had worked the last few nights and had barely slept. But as me and my family left and we got out to our car, I was sitting outside just about to get in, and I could start to feel the bottom of my foot on the shoe. And I could feel the footrest of the wheelchair. And through my jeans, the muscle in my thigh and in my calf were starting to flex. And I was looking at it so confused because this had never happened in four years. My wife was a little bit frustrated from getting the kids in, said, get in the car, we need to go. And I said, can you come here for a second? And I lifted up my leg and I started to move my ankle around in circles. And she was speechless. She, sh she stood there shocked. But then she went back into the church to go tell Dr. Kazumba. And uh, Dr. Kazumba came out, and he was shocked. But he also started to record a video. Now, when we got home, I walked up to our house in the first time in four years. Yeah. And right after that, we took our kids to the skate park. And I desperately wanted to, to skateboard with my boys. I saw them going and I just had this sense deep down that, well, if I can walk, I can do that too. But my wife had enough common sense to say that maybe I should just wait. And thankfully, because I have tried to skateboard, and I need to work on a little bit more of my balance on it. <laughs> but we went back 
for an evening service with Dr. Kazumba. And at that time, I had also walked into the church for the first time in four years. We were so focused on walking, or on my walking, that it took a few days to realize that my hearing and my vision had been restored too. And that even when we were driving and hitting those bumps in the road, I wasn't moaning in pain. So there's not only been just restoration and walking, but in my hearing, in my sight, in my back pain, God did a complete healing. So since the 2nd of June of uh, this year, I have not used the wheelchair. Although I have, admittedly, in Costco or in Walmart, have used their scooters. But now I'm starting to turn away from those two. <laughs> exactly. But in the days that followed, after June 2nd, I was able to stand and to participate in a military ceremony on uh, June 6th for D-Day. In that time, I've also jumped and wrestled on a trampoline with my nieces and with my boys. I've been golfing, and I've even taken my doggy for a walk. I not only feel new on the inside, but uh, God also changed me physically because I used to wear size 11 and a half shoes. After standing for the first time on June 2nd, I realized that my arches were exhausted, like they were so sore. So I needed to go get new shoes. And I tried on my regular size of 11 and a half, and they were ginormous. They were way too big. So I put my foot in the foot measure scale, and it turns out that both my feet, both my feet have shrunk down to a 10 and a half. Not too sure how the, how both of them went smaller, but God has literally made me a new creation on the inside, but also on the out. And we can definitely count this towards God because in 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, and the new is here. And just like how God restored my body and made me new, we also need to do that with our mind. Because in Philippians 4.8, it says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. So no going back to the way how I used to think. And honestly, I'll never take these little things for granted because there is endless joy of going up and down stairs. 
there's the joys of being able to fuel my car or mow the lawn or even carry in groceries. But one of the other things is that I can see the top portion of shelves now. Now I have a hard time seeing what's on the bottom shelf. And it's so nice to be able to carry my little baby around or to even wrestle with my kids and have no pain. I, I just get exhausted because I have an exercise like that. But this is something that I won't take for granted. Now, something, something about this is that I grew up in a Christian home. And we would go to church regularly. And I would hear about God through the Bible stories. And, and I would hear the truth about God. And I've also listened to so many testimonies of people that had this life-changing moment that God took their life and did a 180 with it. But it felt like I never had that. And I even got baptized as a, as a young preteen. And uh, I've struggled with that. I never had the experience of a specific day that God changed my life. Now, I never physically prayed out loud or asked God, but in my heart, it was this, this longing that I had. And God not only answered it, but he ended up doubling it because on May 30th, God gave me the day that I surrendered my life to him. That I was no longer going to be my own ruler. That I was going to have God be the Lord of my life. And he also gave me June 2nd, 2024, as he performed a life-changing miracle. So... Not only do I have a God moment that he took my life and did a 180 with it, he times it by two. And uh, just, I don't know, it still blows my mind. It's hard to, to not be excited about that. But through all of this, all of this heartache and pain and this amazing miracle, we've been able to witness and share with our family and complete strangers. And to show that we serve a God that still does miracles. Now, some people, as difficult as it is, have not received or believed that God healed me. And that, that really um, messes with my brain. So it's like, how can you not see that there's a change, that there's a miracle that happened? Because even, the, even people who have known me through this whole time will not believe that God does miracles. And from this, I would just like to end off on, on two scriptures here. 
In John 12, 37, it says, Even after Jesus had performed so many signs in their presence, they still would not believe in him. And I can totally relate with that now. It's, it's so difficult to try and understand that how can you not how can you not see through this through this miracle but the last the last verse i have here is john 3:11 and says very truly i tell you we speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen but still you people do not accept our testimony and uh, I would just ask that, um, that we just be open to receiving, to receiving this as, uh, as it is true. It's a true story. Um, yeah, thank you for listening. And... I would like to invite my wife just to share a little bit on her perspective of uh, the struggle that she went through. Okay. It's been a morning. <laughs> I woke up grumpy. I woke up hurting myself and I did not want to come up here and I knew that I had to. So it was Steve's testimony. Part of my perspective is I've prayed that Steve would be vulnerable and share about our marriage and our challenges for the past few years. This journey has been so difficult for our family, our marriage and our lives. I've sat and cried to God asking why he doesn't do something. I've gone to the middle of nowhere screaming because I didn't know what else to do. Knowing how much that Steve is active and physically working guy and myself having to take on his activities as, as my own, shoveling snow, literally driving everywhere and laundry. Steve does the laundry better than I do. <laughs> I saw how much pain it brought Steve. Through all of it, Steve would try and see the best in it by making me hot chocolate in the winter after shoveling the snow, getting me a nice cold glass of water after mowing the lawn, and even making me lunch sometimes. It wasn't just the acts of kindness, it was the hugs I received, the compliments of hearing, great job and thank you for doing that. On May 30th of this year, I was cleaning the church and I was upset because of how Steve was acting, the choices he was making, the way he was treating me and our family, and I was praying that God would change Steve's heart and that he would draw near to God. And then I kept getting calls from Steve while I was trying to clean the church. And I was getting annoyed because he kept asking if I was still at the church. And I kept saying yes. And then I said, what do you expect me to just take Eli and leave? And he laughed and he said he was coming to the church. He sat me down and he started to pour his heart out in that moment, I was in shock because the way Steve was talking, it was different. After Steve left, I thanked God and I called my sister to tell her how our prayers had been answered and Steve finally broke down and gave his entire life to God. God has answered my prayers because I saw Steve's demeanor and even the way God spoke, the way Steve spoke was different. And I talked to Steve after he was done his exams, and normally after his exams, he's annoyed, he's frustrated, he's tired, but this time it was different. He was peaceful, and he was happy. Thanks for sharing so openly, Steve, and just so being so vulnerable and making that so raw. I know that was really hard, um, but that's part of a testimony. And 
and just to help people feel like we're not all perfect, we're not all perfect all the time, and even though we're Christians, we still go through struggles, and there's rough times that we go through, but just the, the excitement that God brings us through things and that we have these mountaintops and that he is faithful to us. The biggest thing is that God is faithful to us. And sometimes it's a journey and sometimes it takes a while, um, but he is honest and faithful and true to us. And, um, you know, just God is a God of multiplication. Like not only he gave Steve two new days, but he gave Brittany a testimony. He answered Brittany's prayers. He has answered mine and Scott's prayers and our family's prayers and just given us new, a new refreshing. And I know it's happened to, to people in our own congregation, in this church. People are excited and it's like, God, you are real. You are so amazing. And how, how the ripple effect of what God has done is just going out, which is so amazing. But just to like what Steve said, it, I, my mind was blown when, when Steve was healed, I was like, Oh my gosh, so many people are going to come to the Lord through this. Our church is going to be filled. This is going to be so amazing. And I've had an opportunity. This has given me such a boldness just to witness to people like crazy because I can physically see it's like, this is what God has done. It's hard to witness when it's like, well, I go to church and I'm a Christian, but my life is just like yours. I, I, I don't know it. You need to come to Christ, but I don't know why. You know, like, I know why, but they're like, well, I don't know. You're just the same as me. Why do I need Christ? But now it's like, look at what God did to my son. It's so amazing. And, and some people are really excited and like, that's so cool. But so many people are like, oh, well, maybe he was just ready. They try to justify it. They, they try to rationalize it. They like, and I'm like, people, you have known him for four years. How is this not like a mind blowing experience? But they, they can't receive it. Their blinders are on. It boggles my brain how this, and so yeah, like when Steve shared that scripture, that's exactly what I thought. You read the scripture and, and the disciples are like, oh, let's talk about these miracles and God, we have to share miracles and oh, we have to do more miracles so people will come to the Lord. And he's like, well, if they didn't believe you, just telling about me, the miracles aren't going to bring them to me. And I totally understand that now. And I'm like, yeah. So it's not about the miracles that are going to bring people to Christ. It's about their own belief, but we need to keep sharing. We need to keep telling people about this, about the miracles and be excited and continue doing this and continue witnessing and planting seeds that hopefully they will come to this. So just continue to be encouraged. And if you're witnessing to people and sharing with people and they kind of poo poo you and just like whatever don't give up just keep just keep proclaiming the word because we all are steve's family and we see this just even wa watching him walk back and forth here would just warm me my heart i'm just like look he's just like walking everywhere it's just so amazing so thank you god for everything you've done for our family for his family for our church family just thank you for the anointing that you've put on this church body lord i just can't thank you enough for all the goodness that you have done so I just want to thank everybody for coming today. Um, I want you guys to have a blessed week. Remember to come back for the Bible study on Tuesday at 7 o'clock. And if you guys want prayer, can the prayer team come up here? And, um, and if anybody needs prayer, we'll pray. And I don't know, Steve, if you want to come up, if people want prayer. <laughs> That's a big, bold move. Come on up. So yeah, if anybody wants prayer, come forward. Other than that, you're welcome to go and have a blessed day. Oh. Okay, yeah, on the 31st, there will be, the church will be open if somebody wants to come. Is somebody speaking? Oh, okay, so we will have a service if anybody can't make it out to the lake and, and can't have a ride or whatever and just wants to come to church here, the church will be open and we will have a speaker. <laughs>